We often get questions from our viewers on how to get better at Illustrator. Well, just like with all other skills you need to exercise. And to help you with that, I came up with a great little challenge. In this video, I will show you a workflow to create a Celtic knot and invite you to take part in a little creative exercise. I've always been a big fan of Celtic culture and especially their decorations. So these sophisticated intertwined knots are beautiful to look at and it's actually really fun to recreate them in Illustrator. It's great to practice working with shapes. So today I'm going to show you how I've done this. And again, this is something that we had in our 365 days of creativity challenge, but there it was compressed into one minute. Now I'm going to go through in much more detail. And if you are up for a challenge, I created a board on Milanote. You can find the link in the description below. It's a brilliant tool for organizing everything from imagery to text into one place. And you can try it out for free. You just have to go to milanote.com slash yes, I'm a designer or click on the link in the description below. Me and my team, we recently started using it and it completely changed the way we prepare things and work with clients. So I can highly recommend it. If you are a creative professional designer and you work with a lot of visuals, this tool is going to be so useful and you're honestly missing out if you haven't tried it already. You can pick any of these designs and try to recreate it using the same techniques I'm going to show you in this video. If you manage to recreate any of these or maybe an even more complex Celtic knot, then make sure you tag us with hashtag yes, I'm a designer when you are sharing it. But back to the tutorial, I'm going to move this one to the side. So let's make it a bit smaller and I'm going to just place it here. So it all starts by using circles. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool and on a separate layer, I'm going to start holding down the shift key, drawing a perfect circle, something like that. Now I'm going to use the same color as here, but I'm going to actually start off with no fill, just a stroke. So I will press shift X on the keyboard and now holding down the shift key still, I can increase the stroke value very quickly to something around that. I think that will work maybe a little bit less, let's say 35 millimeters. And I am going to use the appearance panel to add an additional stroke. And that one will be a different color. Let's just make it black. So we will increase it up to 45. Yeah, that will work. So you can already see how this is going to be used to construct that main knot design that we have there. Now what we need to do is to create a duplicate. So I'm going to select the shape and Alt click and drag with the selection tool, drag it to the side. Now this we will move around later on, but for now I'm just going to keep it here and move the whole thing up a bit. So we have just a bit more space further down because we need another copy again, Alt click and drag, which we can drag down here to the bottom. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to reduce the stroke sizes. So the 45 was too much and also the 35, I think we can go down to 30, maybe even 20 on this and 30 on the other one. Yeah, that's closer to what we need. Um, I might refine it later, but for now, I think that will work better. The only thing we need to make sure is that this circle that we have at the bottom is aligned exactly in the center of the other two that we have above. So the easiest way to do this would be to use the rulers and get a guide out, align that guide in the center of the intersection here, and then also align this circle at the bottom exactly to that guide. So something like that. Now I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard and move it up. And what I'm looking for is to try to even out these shapes here. So probably you could measure these to make sure it's perfectly matched, but I'm actually happy with the way this looks. At this point, all I have to do is to make sure that the right sizes are used for the strokes. So once again, I might increase this a bit, maybe 25 and 35. Yes, I think that will be perfect. Now I can get rid of the guide by going to the view menu and then just simply clear guides from here choose clear guides. That's it. 
At this point, I would actually change the color of this stroke to white because we will add the color later on. So I prefer to keep it white like this. And then having all of them selected, we will do the expand appearance option first and then object expand again. So at this point, once you click OK, all the strokes are turned into fills. So you won't be able to access them anymore from the appearance panel. They are now merged into field shapes. And this is the point where you switch to the shape builder tool. Shift M is the shortcut for it. And essentially what we are doing first is to get rid of the unnecessary details. So Alt click and drag or Option click and drag over the details you don't need. So we could get rid of those very quickly. And then we can start merging these details. So for example, these should be all joined into one. And then we can also do the same here. So all of this should be joined together like so. And then we can also join these ones up together. Now we select the Live Paint Bucket tool. We can press K on the keyboard for it. And then simply click on any details that needs to be filled with black, like these lines here need to be filled. And then this one here on the top also. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that there is an intentional mistake here. This shape here should overlap the other one. As you can see on the left side here, this arch should go over the other one. Now, if you want to fix this, of course you can do it, but because you started using the live paint bucket, this whole thing turned into a live paint group, which you need to expand to be able to access it again with the shape builder tool. So you will need to go back and forth a couple of times, but that's not a problem. So we can click on expand. Now we can use the shape builder tool. And what we need to do is to go over that detail there. And then we can switch back to the live paint and simply fill these details in with black. So see, we could fix it easily as long as you know that you need to expand to get back to normal shapes and then use again the live paint bucket tool. Now, if I have this selected again, I can also add colors in the middle. Let's just add the same blue again. So I'm going to fill it in and there we go. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now the last bit of detail we need to add is the shading, which you can see here on the left side. Now you can again do this in many different ways, but I'm going to show you a similar technique to what we used already on the actual design itself. I'm going to create another circle similar in size to the previous one. Yeah, let's actually make it more, even more similar to that size. So I'm just going to align it with the space bar and then I'm going to use again a stroke increase the size of it. And then from here in the appearance panel, I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So that looks quite good already. I'm just going to move it to the side a bit. Uh, or actually, it's even easier if we just set the stroke to outside, not inside, we want it outside, that's it. So you can see how it looks, maybe we can make make it a bit narrower or smaller. Yeah, that will be enough. Now, once we have this ready, we can again expand the appearance so it becomes fill and we can select all of this design together, use the shape builder tool, hold down the alter option key and click on the details that we don't need. Now, be careful with this detail here because if you click on it, it also deletes what's under it. So the original shape. So instead of using the shape builder for this, I'm just going to use the eraser tool. So once you select eraser, just increase the brush size 
and you can delete any details from it that you don't need like all of this can go even from here we can delete back into it a bit and that side also is not necessary all right so this is all we need that shape and we just need to duplicate it so we need to put one on the top so alt click and drag and then with r that's the to rotate you can rotate it around just let's rotate it a bit more i'm usually less concerned about the positioning of these because this is just basically can go anywhere around here because it blends into the rest of the design that is fine and then alt click and drag rotate move and i think we are pretty much there yeah with the arrow keys we can nudge it in place so there you go that's the design and we can always refine it further but i think that works really well now let's not forget that we can always change the colors if we select the whole thing together and go to the recolor artwork option here we have access to all the colors including the shading so if i lock them together we can just move these around and find whatever color we prefer so i'm just going to change it to slightly different color this time maybe this yellowish green and that's all i wanted to show you in this tutorial but remember if you feel like you are up for a challenge please check out the link in the description below and choose one of these Celtic knots and try to apply the same technique on it. Or if you know of a better and faster or more efficient way to create these designs, then make sure you leave a comment below. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.